Hi everybody. In this video I'm, in, I'm going to explain the assembly of our vacuum machine. This is not for the operation. This is if you've either uh, bought the sheet metal parts to assemble your own or if you bought the plans to make this. This video will help explain a lot to you. So I'm going to go over the, the basic layout. First of all we have a tank down below. That's a tank from Harbor Freight. I think it costs about $30 and then we have a vacuum pump and that is uh, also from Harbor Freight I think that was about a hundred bucks and then we have a shop vac just a generic shop vacuum I want to explain the plumbing you see here first of all we have two different vacuum gauges they could be the same but I got one from Harbor Freight just didn't seem to be super accurate and so I went on the internet and I got another gauge. Oh, I think it was about uh, eight bucks on the internet for a real accurate vacuum gauge. But I now know we could have used this cheaper Harbor Freight for, for both of the gauges. So what we have, the tank, is plumbed directly to this gauge so that we can always read the vacuum in that tank. Then the tank and this gauge are plumbed together to this valve and they're also plumbed to this valve. Then the other side of this valve goes to our vacuum pump. There's a T here. The top of this valve goes to the center of our table here and it goes to a flange on the bottom side of the plenum in our table. The seal you see here is just a secondary seal and it really doesn't seem to be all that important. It does help us just a little bit if we don't get a good seal in our plastic frame, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, to continue with the plumbing here, this valve is plumbed to the flange on the bottom of our plenum, but we also have a T here so that the top of this valve is plumbed to this gauge and our flange. The top of this valve is plumbed to our gauge, the flange, and also to this valve. Then this valve connects to our shop vac. So again for the plumbing tank has its own gauge. It goes to the tank valve, I call it the dump valve. That dump valve connects to this gauge, so we're only going to see pressure on this gauge once we dump the tank. This gauge is also connected to the plenum, and it's connected to this valve. So this valve is for the shop vac. This allows us to turn off the circuit to the shop vac, so our vacuum can't bleed back through there if we're trying to hold vacuum for an extended period of time. This valve to our pump allows us to turn the pump off again for an extended uh, vacuum so that we don't bleed backwards through the pump. So we have two switches here, pretty basic. One turns on our shop vac, the other one turns on our vacuum pump. So to operate it, what we're going to do, we're going to, uh, we can uh, turn off the vacuum cleaner and we're going to turn off the platen but we're going to open the valve that goes from the pump to the tank. Everything else is closed. And we're going to vacuum out that tank. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but we're starting to get a reading on this gauge that shows us we are building vacuum in the tank. That takes a moment or two, but once we've built the vacuum in the tank, we can turn off our pump and turn off the valve to the pump and the vacuum can't leak out of the tank. This will hold vacuum and forever in the tank. Now to begin a pull we're going to turn on the vacuum cleaner and it's a little loud so I'm not going to leave it on but we're going to turn on the vacuum cleaner and we're going to open the valve that connects the vacuum cleaner to the plenum, to the flange and then we'll pull our part. Um, to, to pull the part, we leave the vacuum cleaner running. We're going to start our pull and get a seal. And as soon as we've got a good seal, then we're going to dump the tank here. And what that did was it, uh, 
I say dump, it's actually the opposite of it. <laughs> it, it pulled the vacuum through this hole and it released the vacuum out of our tank. Now if our part was here and our plastic was hot and our plastic was on the mold, it would be holding vacuum right now until we let it go. And the way we generally would let it go is open the valve to the vacuum cleaner and the air can bleed off through the vacuum cleaner. So uh, just to kind of keep moving here, piece of chicken wire, or, uh, mesh, wire mesh you would call it. I found that that really helps. We actually get so much vacuum here that it, it sucks pretty hard on the bottom of our platen. The platen is a piece of MDF, a half inch thick, with a bunch of holes drilled in it. And I used a pegboard as a guide. I didn't mark anything. I just put a piece of pegboard on top of it and drilled a hole through every hole in the pegboard. And that took about 20 minutes. It's not a big deal. That is a lot of holes. Don't let it scare you. You don't need to draw a bunch of lines on there. Just stick a piece of pegboard on it and drill a hole through every hole. They, they don't have to be nice and clean. We're going to put down our piece of wire mesh. That keeps this from getting sucked real hard against the hole there. It helps distribute the air out to the holes in the platen. And then really this seal, I, I think mostly what I use it for is just to help me line everything up. There's not really much of a seal going on here. So that being said, I want to explain the seal. The seal is actually your hot plastic making a seal against the edge of the platen. And once that's done, these seals re really aren't even needed. So our hot plastic is making the seal against the edge here. Uh, right quickly, I'll show you the frame. Now what we would do is we would put our plastic in here. And we would sandwich it in there with this top frame. And then we would put some kind of clamps or clips on it, put those all the way around. Remember our plastic is in here now. It's not in the video, but it would be in here. Now we can leave those on. Um, turn on the vacuum cleaner. And basically we'd be pulling our part on the mold right now. But really what I just wanted to show how it's assembled. And then also we found we, we needed some guides, so we put some little aluminum tabs. These could be steel. I kind of bent them up. They, they act like a spring, and they, they hold the top frame in there real nice. And then also just put some, uh, this is an afterthought, I put some angle iron back here to help us guide that frame down. Uh, so, sorry that took so long, but again, it's just trying to explain how the machine is put together. For the operation of the machine, see some of our other videos, and they're either in the visitor's area or they're up above on this page. Thank you.